topics under discussion, of course, the riots in the Pacific Northwest and around the country, foreign policy, Russia, China, North Korea, pipelines, all compelling, all things that are covered widely in the news. But at the same time in this country, there are a lot of things that don't get a lot of coverage. At this moment, the most compelling voice against abortion and Planned Parenthood is not a Republican. The most widely heard Christian evangelist in America is not ordained. Instead, he is a rapper married to a Kardashian, who, by the way, everyone says is crazy. Kanye West is running for president, but that's not really the headline. The headline is that on core conservative issues, not political issues like legislation before the Congress, but on foundational questions about life and children and what happens when you die, no one with a national platform has been more honest or sincere or effective than Kanye West has been, maybe in generations. It's all pretty shocking, really. Talk about an unlikely messenger. But it's real. Check out West's Twitter feed if you haven't seen it. Not everything he says is conservative, far from it. Not everything he says is even intelligible. But when West talks about his faith and about the gift of human life, you start to ask yourself, why aren't there any elected Republicans who sound like that? They say they believe the same things, but if they actually do, why don't they talk like Kanye West does? And the answer, of course, is because they're afraid to. But West is not afraid. He doesn't have to be. He's too famous. He's made too much money. He sold something like 150 million albums over the past 20 years. And really, it's hard to cancel a guy like that. So what does the left do in response to Kanye West? How do you make Kanye West shut up? The short answer is you can't. So you work to discredit him. You go ad hominem. You ignore what he's saying. You attack him as a person. You don't engage with his ideas. You know you would lose if you tried that. So instead, you try to keep people from listening to him. It's an easier job when you're dealing with less famous people. Thanks to our centrally controlled internet, the left can usually silence dissent in an instant with the press of a button. But with prominent wrong thinkers like Kanye West, censorship requires a finer touch, more artistic flair. When the author J.K. Rowling had the gall to note that biological sex is a physical reality, not just a state of mind, Google couldn't simply wipe her off the internet. She's J.K. Rowling. She created Harry Potter. So the left had to destroy her more methodically. One British news site compared Rowling to the anti-Semite Richard Wagner and then dismissed her as, quote, deeply unpleasant. So multiply that attack by hundreds of stories, and over time, they are confident, and maybe they're right, that no one will ever listen to J.K. Rowling again. In Kanye West's case, they decided to attack him as mentally ill. You hear that a lot now, but it's a relatively new tactic. It was just a little over four years ago that CNN published a piece about Kanye West. They highlighted his most famous moments, like the time he interrupted Taylor Swift at the MTV Video Music Awards. CNN described all these incidents as, quote, controversial. But there was no mention of Kanye West being a danger to himself, much less mentally ill. No, just controversial, not a problem. And then West appeared to say something positive about Donald Trump, and everything changed in an instant. Kanye West became a babbling lunatic, the kind of guy who pulls imaginary insects out of the air and soils his own pants. A total nutcase. Watch. Kanye West's um, event on Sunday, and, and you saw, right. um, at, at least I saw a man clearly in trouble. We met David Bowen, a Democratic state representative, earlier this summer. Bowen telling CNN, it's sad to see a popular music artist like Kanye be used as a pawn to trick his own people and fans. So new questions this morning about Kanye West's mental health after this tweet storm and so-called campaign rally. You see that, that ignorance and asinine uh, thought and behavior um, it has been something that's risen to the top. Whether a clearly vulnerable Mr. West is being used to try to siphon votes away from Joe Biden. They're sad. They're concerned. He's in trouble. Oh, it's all so fake. The feigned concern, the oily fake empathy. Kanye is vulnerable, right? These people are actually worried, but they're not worried about Kanye West or his family. They don't care about them. They're worried about the threat that West poses to Democratic Party orthodoxy and therefore to their power. They don't say that out loud. They're liars. So instead, they continue to play the role of psychiatric nurse. 
Here's the guy whose job it is to get drunk on camera on New Year's Eve, letting Kanye West know that he's embarrassing himself and his dead mother. What I saw was a minstrel show today. Him in front of all of these white people, mostly white people, embarrassing himself and embarrassing Americans, but mostly African Americans. And now all of a sudden, he is the person who represents the African American community. He doesn't. This was an embarrassment. Kanye's mother is rolling over in her grave. He's defiling the memory of his mother. Sad. You'll notice that this group of cable news mental health experts may be deeply concerned about Kanye West, and yet for all of their apparent medical training, somehow they don't appear to notice that Joe Biden can no longer speak English. Joe's fine. He's not embarrassing anyone. Kanye West, by contrast, is deeply embarrassing to them, mostly because he's embarrassing to the Democratic Party. Here is someone who should be a Democrat calling out the most absurd lie that party tells. We care about black lives. That's why we want more abortion clinics in black neighborhoods. That's their position. It is insultingly stupid, and anyone who thinks about it knows that. When you love your kids, you want them to grow up and have children of their own. It's the main thing you want. But if your most consistent message to your children was, please end your pregnancy, they might start to wonder how you really felt about them. And Kanye West has start to wonder about that and things like that. Last month on Twitter, West wrote that he had, quote, cried at the thought of aborting my firstborn. I'm concerned for the world that feels you shouldn't cry about this subject. That's for sure. It's obvious. But when Kanye West says it, people might actually listen to him. And that's a massive problem for the left. Here he is last month. My mom saved my life. My dad wanted to abort me. My mom saved my life. There would have been no Kanye West because my dad was too busy. When was the last time you heard someone famous say something like that in public? Let's see, never. And then Wes went on to point out some of the more inconvenient facts that the progressive left wants you to forget. Quote, over 22,500,000 black babies have been aborted over the past 50 years, Wes tweeted. See, the media said, he's not well. Pray for him. Of course, what Wes said was factually true. What's also true is that Planned Parenthood was founded by someone who wanted fewer black people. That's why she founded Planned Parenthood. Her name was Margaret Sanger, and she once wondered aloud about the appearances of, quote, exterminating the Negro population, end quote. It's disgusting. You can find that on Google. West has. He knows it. And learning it clearly made him rethink his worldview. Here he is from a couple of years ago. One of the moves that I love that liberals tried to do the liberal would try to control a black person through the concept of racism because they know that we are very proud, emotional people. So when I said I like Trump to like someone that's liberal, they'll say, oh, but he's racist. You think racism can control me? Oh, that don't stop me. That's an invisible wall. <laughs> oh, no wonder they hate him. Now, to be clear, Kanye West is not a normal person. And we're not saying he is. He has said out loud he sometimes suffers from something he calls a sprained brain. We're not sure what that is. We're not pretending to be mental health experts. And maybe Kanye West is crazy. We don't know. But it's also true, and wise people know this, that at a time like this, a lunatic time, sometimes it is only the crazy people who can see the world clearly.